Mijn naam is Vincent van der Broek en welkom bij het allereerste online event van Achtjevoort, Gallery of Icons. We kijken kort terug naar het afgelopen jaar en natuurlijk laat ik jullie onze vernieuwde Achtjevoort Gallery of Icons showroom zien. En we geven jullie een sneak peek van de Achtjevoort noviteiten van 2021. Ook nemen we een kijkje bij onze art director Cody Vijs, die in gesprek gaat met designer Luca Niketto. Dat ze samen kijken naar drie noviteiten en delen waar hun inspiratie vandaan komt. Ik sta in ieder geval al maanden te springen om jullie dit te mogen laten zien. Mocht je vragen hebben gedurende dit event, stel deze dan in onze chat. We zitten klaar om deze voor je te beantwoorden. Daarnaast maak je aan het einde van dit event ook kans op een leuke prijs. Maar daarover later meer. We beginnen met Maurits van der Landen van de Landengroep. Hi, ik ben Maurits van der Landen en samen met mijn broers vorm ik de directie van Landengroep. We zijn een vooruitstrevend familiebedrijf dat tijdloze meubels maakt met circa 200 professionele vakmensen. Natuurlijk voor het merk Artifor, maar ook voor de merken Landen, Zwaardvis en Purner. Bij Artifor geloven we dat onze rijke historie, onze passie voor design, ons vakmanschap en nieuwsgierigheid naar innovatieve productiemethoden de basis zijn voor het creëren van tijdloze producten. Met als doel dat onze meubels van deze op volgende generaties kunnen worden doorgegeven. Dat doen we namelijk al sinds 1890 met iconische klassiekers van designers als Cole Yangi, Pierre Paulin en Jeffrey Harcourt. Maar natuurlijk ook met de huidige generatie topdesigners. Zoals Luc en Niketto, Cody Vijs, René Holte en Monica Forster zetten Artifords missie voort om toekomstige designklassiekers te creëren die we wereldwijd in meer dan 60 landen uitzetten. Het afgelopen jaar heeft nieuwe inzichten gegeven. De coronapandemie zette de wereld op zijn kop. In maart 2020 was alles onzeker op het gebied van gezondheid en business. Maar met de zekerheid van een gezond ondernemend familiebedrijf zijn wij gaan schakelen. Onder het mom van Never Waste a Good Crisis. Door onder andere interne bedrijfsstructuren efficiënter te maken, een nieuwe landengroepstrategie uit te zetten en bovenal vertrouwen op onze vakmensen, zijn we er krachtig uitgekomen. Dit hadden we bij aanvang van de coronapandemie nooit verwacht. Maar met de juiste energie en instelling hebben we dit wel weten af te dwingen. Door ons met name te focussen op online mogelijkheden als Picon, sfeerfotografie, videocontent en een online event als deze, gaat het bewerken van onze wereldwijde speelveld door, of dat nou vanuit kantoor of thuis is. Daarnaast spelen we in op nieuwe maatschappelijke behoeftes als well-being, quality demand en comfort. We nodigen je uit om samen met ons van 2021 weer een goed jaar te maken, gecreëerd vanuit onze duurzame visie. Artifor, design dat je persoonlijk raakt en je leven verrijkt. Voor altijd. Zoals Maurits al heeft genoemd, hebben er veel nieuwe ontwikkelingen plaatsgevonden. Zo ook een volledig vernieuwde show. Wanneer de show binnenkomt, starten we met de ribben van Pierre Paulin. De kwaliteit, de mooie materialen, de organische vormgeving. Deze fauteuil is een echte designklassieker van Artifor. In de Gallery of Icons laat je je inspireren met kleurrijke afwerkingen en bijzondere materialen, zoals deze Manhattanbank. De veelzijdigheid van Artifort laten we overal terugkomen met kleurrijke combinaties en een juiste mix van klassieke en nieuwe ontwerpen. Kleurrijke combinaties die je zelf kan bepalen en die perfect passen bij jouw wensen, dat vind je hier in het Material Lab. Met kwalitatieve materialen, zoals houtsoorten, poederkoten, maar ook stoffen, de mogelijkheden zijn eindeloos. We inspireren diverse doelgroepen, zoals designliefhebbers en interieurprofessionals. Deze Iconic Chairs staan voor ruim 60 jaar design en bezitten een blijvende en ongekende kwaliteit, met een duidelijke en individuele vormtaal. Ook al zit er 60 jaar tussen deze twee designs, de ontwerpen lopen toch naadloos in elkaar over. De veelzijdigheid van Artifort zie je overal terug, met kleurrijke combinaties en de juiste mix tussen klassieke en nieuwe ontwerpen. En na zoveel jaar Artifort hebben wij ook een beetje gepaste trots. En dat laten we hier zien met onze Wall of Fame. Thank you. 
en we eindigen bij het hier en nu, de novelties van 2021. We hebben het DNA van Artje voor terug laten komen in de showroom, waarbij kwaliteit, organische vormen en comfort centraal staan. Dit jaar hebben we onder andere samengewerkt met designer Cody Vijs. Cody ontwikkelde al vele projecten samen met de Artifort, waaronder de Figura, de Bra en de Besso familie. Cody heeft dit jaar twee nieuwe modellen voor Artifort ontworpen. Hoe hij dat heeft gedaan en waar hij zijn inspiratie vandaan haalt, dat laat hij graag zelf zien in zijn studio in Amsterdam. Hallo, welkom. Ik ben Cody Fays. Ik ben de art director voor RT4. En ik geloof dat goed design is based on three pillars. One is uh, clarity, the other is concept, and the third being the context of use. Clarity is not only about um, being simplistic, but being clear and a, a me message which is communicative. Uh, concept is about when you look at something and you have to look back again, where the idea becomes the most important. And context is where um, our products being used, whether it's at home, at, in the hospital, or at work, it's very important the content, to take into the account the context when you're in design. For us, this kind of uh, multitude of uh, products gives uh, much more meaning to our designs. And I think that's a big strength to be able to look at one thing and uh, have inspiration for another. For Aloha, we, um, uh, together with RT4, look at, looked at the whole portfolio. And from there, we um, uh, focused on chairs and tried to find out where there are some gaps. And it looked like um, a very simple, um, timeless chair um, had a very basic characteristic was missing. And that was kind of the starting point for uh, the Aloha chair. With the Aloha, I wanted to, to create a very simple basic structure, a structure which um, more or less um, created a, a support for the backrest, the armrest, and the seat. Very simple, very pure, but at the same time, elegant and timeless. This is the first ideas that come to mind for your chair. I wanted a chair which had uh, gesture and character, a chair which um, was simple enough to produce. Um, so from the sketches, uh, then we go into small mock-ups. This gives us an impression about the design and uh, whether it's, we're in the right track or not. It's very uh, important, these scale models, because it gives uh, meaning not only to the design, but also to the family uh, and, and, the, and the development of it further. And then from that, uh, uh, based on the discussions, we go more and more into one-to-one uh, -one scale mock-ups. We can see, feel, sit, um, test the comfort, look at the proportions. I was not very happy with the proportions of the armrest and the, and, the, and the back and the flow with the back. So we created a smaller armrest. I wanted something very cute and compact and not too overwhelming. Um, we looked at the, 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 the surface of the seat and how we can create a more uh, softer, uh, perceived comfort uh, into the seat itself. Um, we looked at the, 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 uh, the structure and how efficient we can develop it, uh, how simple is it to produce in that sense. So all of those uh, elements become important in this phase. And from this phase, we go towards production to reality, and that's, that's very important. So following from the sketches and the ideas to the mock-ups and uh, the scale uh, and the family to the, the prototypes, 
to the final product. For the Aloe chair, I wanted to um, make sure that it's home in many different contexts, whether it's at home, around the dining table, where it's in the office, in the meeting context, or at, let's say, at a cafe. It needed to be fitting perfectly in all these different situations. And that's how it started. And uh, the design is very simple and pure, but very ca um, characterful. The idea of a, um, a structure which holds on to the backrest. The backrest is pressed into the structure, creating a, an expression of softness, of uh, foam pressing against metal. Um, a nice, generous seat, which is soft and inviting to sit on, and a, a frame which is not too obtrusive, but still has a character and a signature on its own. And what I wanted to make sure was to use this frame in context of a chair with arms and a chair without arms. So if, as you can see, the structure and the frame is precisely the same on both chairs. Only the backrests are different. Um, but everything around the chair is completely designed. I think it's as important for a chair to be beautiful from the front as it is from the back. And most importantly, I think it's very critical that the chair is comfortable. And I think uh, the Oloa is very comfortable. The inspiration for the name Aloha came um, when I was designing it. More and more, uh, the chair looked like an embrace, like a welcome. And Aloha means hello. So I thought uh, it's a nice uh, name to kind of uh, work with, Some, a chair which is uh, embracing you, uh, greeting you, welcoming you, just uh, says hello. When designing the Besso table program, the idea was to uh, create a program which was very pure, very basic, and uh, using geometric forms, rectangles, squares, circles, uh, not too complicated, small, large. Uh, and the whole idea was to create a, a program which was flexible enough to work with the Besso program the chairs, the loungers, and now the tables complete the project. Uh, one important thing for me was to make sure that there was enough leg room f around the tables for people to sit comfortably. That's why the structure was designed in this way. The legs are pushed in as much as possible together, uh, creating better space for your legs. There's a structural beam which matches the tabletop uh, and creates the, the, the accent and the icon for the design. And then the, the arms uh, swaying open, creating a good structural support for the table. And this results uh, in a table program which is simple, pure, and fits any environment, whether at the office or in other situations. The best of table um, program uh, not only consists of uh, uh, basic dining tables like this, uh, simple, uh, rectangular, circular, but it, uh, the beauty of the design is that it can grow into a full program. The, the leg structures are designed in a way that uh, connectivity of tabletops is very easy, how you can create um, uh, modular definitions for the tables uh, to uh, address different needs and uses for example, in the office environment, are very easily adaptable with the Besso program. And that's, I think, the interesting part for this design. At the same time, because of its flexibility and modularity, it's a very, uh, let's say, circular pro um, product. We use uh, high quality um, uh, materials such as uh, solid wood, such as um, high quality veneers, uh, powder coated steel, uh, the beam itself is defined in solid wood in that sense, creating a new opportunity for uh, personalization and selection of materials. For, if, for example, for my personal uh, 
combination. My, my favorite, I can imagine to have a, a beautiful dark tabletop with a dark gray anthracite um, powder coated legs uh, and then upholstery maybe which is uh, complementary at the same time uh, acts as an, as an accent can be a beautiful setting. So um, you can see it's very easy to customize and personalize. And I think this would be a really nice uh, combination. Ciao Luca. How Ciao are you Cody. Doing? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> yes, fine, fine. Crazy times in these uh, Corona times. Tell me, tell me a little bit how you're um, experiencing uh, life in the, in the pandemic uh, between Sweden and Italy and work and everything. How has that affected uh, you and, uh, and your work? Well, um, it was not any more a life between Sweden and Italy because it was only Sweden. <laughs> and it was a bit... Um, Honestly, it was a bit strange, uh, in the especially in the beginning, because uh, there was really like uh, a completely different strategy here in Sweden. Uh, I don't want to say compared to Italy, but probably compared with the rest of the world. Uh, and maybe because all my relatives and friends and also my other studio uh, is in Venice, having and dealing with the fear of people uh, was uh, was a very awkward situation yes yes and yes yes but indeed. then i mean especially now that at least you can see a small light <laughs> at the end of the tunnel you feel also kind of proud of the uh, of all this that you i mean i feel proud that we were able to really managing yes. the best that we can the situation it was a resource that i i really appreciate and uh, and working wise honestly in the end of course i miss uh, i miss traveling going to the factory seeing the prototyping uh, happening you know in, in real life yes um, yes yes i mean i think all of us that we are doing what we are doing we rediscover how much important it is for us the time uh, spent together with other people in creating our own yes, vision, no? Yes, and, yes. and not just. But it's also true that having two studios in two different countries working remotely was something that I was doing quite often. Yes, you were used uh, to it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, of course, become a sort of normality. Uh, it's true that I received the prototype in the studio, have the opportunity to check it, but it's also different because when you receive a prototype in the studio, it's not the same no. thing than going no. to the factory, no. right? Exactly, so. exactly. Where, as we are um, uh, discussing all of this uh, uh, virtually, uh, the, the, the launch of your product, uh, the glider, I'm sitting on it in real Lucky. life touching Lucky it you. and you're Lucky on the you. other side in, in <laughs> Stockholm uh, having to be virtually together with me. Uh, tell me a little bit about um, the glider, the, your inspirations, what came about when you, you, you got the, the briefing with RT4 and how did it evolve? I think the work of the designer is not only in, uh, you know, visualizing the future for the brand, but is also trying to respect a lot the DNA of the brand. So it's kind of uh, putting your feet into a different kind of era, right? So what, you know, thinking about what was the past, and not to repeat the past, just to be able to create a fil rouge and a trajectory that move uh, the company also into the future. And I'm a kind of designer that Maybe I'm a bit old fashioned, I don't know, or is my Italian imprinting, uh, I don't know, but uh, I always like to remember a sentence of Vico Magistretti that was saying that the designer is the father and the company is the mother. 
uh, mm. of a new product. Mm. And I really like that synthesis because mean a lot, mean that it's 50-50. So if the same project I will give to another company with other expertise, the result of course will be different. Yes, yes. But the idea is the same. Correct. Yeah. And so uh, it's a creation. Uh, and it's a creation that I uh, I like to really combine with the the the, the DNA and the know-how of the brand. For Artifort in particular, for me, of course, not only for me, I think, but for all of us, the work of Pierre Poulain was such a, I would say, a manifesto of modernity and uh, and completely another chapter, not only for Artifort, but I think in general for the entire right. design industry. With Glider, the brief was pretty much precise in, in terms of uh, what uh, you and the company you were looking for. It's true that for me, I was trying to see also older project that the brand did, mm. that was in a way using that kind of combination of material and uh, metal and upholstery, let's say, and trying to see how I can maintain um, a kind of attitude in, in, in terms of uh, the Luca Niketo attitude, mm -hmm, in, yeah, mm -hmm. but matching the, the, the DNA and, and the trajectory that started 40, 50 years ago. Yes, yes, yes. I. One of the beautiful things I think with Artifort is that the company is very deep into the manufacturing also process. Mm -hmm. So as a designer that I really like the manufacturing process, uh, for me is like the perfect partner uh, because we have the common interest in a way. And so there is always in the development a lot of back and forth how to do the things in that direction or that direction. And I think it's a kind of exchange that creates also richness. And so I leave a project also not with the idea only to give something, but of course I'm also receiving a lot. Yes. And yes. that receiving is. Uh, something that don't have economical value is something that uh, you become more uh, complete as a designer. Okay, Luca, can you um, tell me a little bit more about the glider and the design and your, um, your inspirations around that? Yeah, of course. I, I'm, I, mean, it's, um, I mean, it's a very simple approach. Normally a, a chair is done by a back a seat and uh, and a frame that normally is also the legs. So what I tried to do was observing this element and trying to emphasize, uh, for example, the back in this case of glider. Uh, the back is becoming a sort of uh, oversized element that is almost embracing uh, the seat. And in this kind of gesture of embracing the seat is also because normally a chair uh, is also welcoming the users, right? The people that are using the product. Yes. Uh, and I really want that they feel a sort of hug <laughs> mm. when they are seated on that. And and the frame uh, is like the skeleton, no? The skeleton that is connecting this element and but i really want to maintain this gap between the big back and, and, and the seat because it's, it's almost creating a smile a smile that um, uh, i think need to uh, is able also to create a sort of empathy right, uh, right. between the users and the product himself uh, and pushing also in a sort of elegance that for me was very important to achieve and in the same time, when when the back is connected with the arm, uh, is somehow the product himself is pushing the users to have a sort of behavior when he sit on that. Mm. So, uh, but it's a behavior that you need also to respect the different kind of users because all of us we are different. 
And, and also with the main idea that this product needs to be a sort of transversal between a hybridation almost between the residential, let's say, kind of environment and, and the more commercial and contract environment, this, um, the behavior on, on, on this product can be much different every time. So uh, it's really a kind of humanistic approach in, in, into the design. Yes, and yes. Um, I, 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 really, I really want to do a product that is for all, in a way. It's maybe it sounds super ambitious, uh, and uh, but it's really something that uh, uh, pushed me to, to, to achieve this kind of design. I mean, it's sitting in it, it is perfetto. It's uh, very, <laughs> very comfortable. Really, uh, um, RT4 um, asked um, everybody there to try it, to use it, to sit on it, to give their impressions. And by far, um, all the responses have been very, very uh, positive for this chair. So since you haven't touched it and sat on it, I can uh, tell you it's very, uh, super comfortable. And indeed, how you say with the arms uh, and the gesture, how you can sit, uh, how flexible you are in it, the openness, uh, it's, it's beautiful. Really, really nice. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm very glad to hear that. It's a, it's a baby of the pandemic, but nobody can see that. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, but that, that, that is a good thing. Yeah. Also because, I mean, uh, talking about the pandemic, we, uh, I think one good thing that the pandemic teach to all of us, I think, is also not only to be in hurry, you know, to present a product uh, for a specific moment very that maybe it. was Milan very or maybe good. was uh, yes. another trade show, right? So that creates a sort of flow yeah. uh, that I think is very respectful for the idea to, to become mature in, in the right timing yes. without this crazy pressure Correct. not to, to, yeah. to launch novelties yes. uh, yes. in that specific yes. moment. And I really hope, and I try to have my finger crossed that we are able, you know, not losing this because um, I think it's a super positive situation that for both designer and brands can generate not a crazy, you know, schedule with a yeah. super high moment that everyone is stressed right, and then right. is down or nothing. Right. But that may make a, a trajectory that maintain right. attention, but is much longer. Exactly. No shortcuts, no shortcuts. Yeah. That's it. So Luca, it was really, really nice to talk to you. I hope that uh, we can see each other and touch each other in real life uh, very soon. But thanks Me very too. much for your time. It was really uh, nice. Uh, thank you, God. You know the same. The same here. I mean, I, I'm really looking forward, not only touching you, but also having a drink. <laughs> exactly. You got it. You got it. Looking forward. Thanks very much. Huh? Yeah. Thank you. Ciao, thank ciao. You very much. Bye, ciao. bye. We zijn super trots op de Gallery of Icon Showroom, de noviteiten van 2021 en op de samenwerkingen met de designers die we dit jaar hebben kunnen realiseren. De komende periode organiseren we diverse events waarin we je graag live hier in de showroom uitnodigen. De place to be om het comfort en de sfeer zelf te ervaren. Aan het begin hadden we het al over een prijs. Wil je hiervoor in aanmerking komen? Stuur dan je contactgegevens naar galleryoficons.com. Alle aanmeldingen ontvangen sowieso de nieuwste artifacts thuis op de deurmat. Onder deze inzendingen verloten we ook nog een prachtige hoofdprijs. De winnaar wint de VIP-tour door de showroom, de productielocatie en het Archivot-archief. En mag daar zijn of haar favoriete Lila 2.0 samenstellen. Ik wil iedereen hartelijk bedanken voor de deelname aan dit online event. We verwelkomen je graag in onze vernieuwde showroom in Schijndel.